Hi everyone, welcome to this short tutorial from Pathology Med Simple Tile of Pathology. The topic which I am discussing today is endometrial cancer. So we shall be discussing this in these headings. We will see what are the types of endometrial cancer, the etiopathogenesis, the morphology, the clinical features and a bit about treatment and the prognosis of endometrial cancer. Now before we start uh, knowing about the endometrial cancer, let us see what endometrium is. Endometrium, as you all know, it is the lining of uterus. This is comprised of endometrial glands and the specialized stroma. So coming to the endometrial uh, tumors, the, the malignant tumors of endometrium can be, you know, of different types. One, it can be from the endometrial glands itself and that's called endometrial carcinoma where the uh, carcinoma or the malignancy which arises from the endometrial glands. The second one is carcinosarcoma. It's a mixture of carcinoma and the mesenchymal component. So this also arises from endometrial glands. I'll talk about though it has a mesenchymal component, this is not a stromal tumor. We'll talk about it a bit later. Okay. The third type of tumors of uh, malignant uh, tumors of endometrium is the combination of benign endometrial glands and the malignant stromal tumor that is adenosarcoma. And the last one is pure stromal malignant tumors. They are called as endometrial stromal sarcoma. So we will understand each one of these entities one by one. First one is endometrial carcinoma. This is the most common invasive cancer of the female genital tract, which accounts to around 7% of all invasive cancer in women, except skin cancers. Okay. So how do we classify endometrial cancers? It's endometrial car carcinomas are classified as type 1 and type 2 carcinomas. Each of these types are a distinct entity in terms of, you know, the morphology, in terms of the clinical features and the prognosis. So morphologically, type 1 resembles, you know, the normal proliferative type of endometrial glands. That's why it's called endometrioid cancer are endometrioid carcinoma and the type 2 is called as serous carcinomas of the endometrium. Okay. Now we will talk about endometrioid type of endometrial carcinoma. This is the most common type of endometrial cancer. It accounts to around 80 to 85 percent of cases and the risk factors being unopposed estrogenic stimulation of endometrium. Now what are all the conditions where you can expect unopposed estrogenic stimulation of endometrium? One, it could be an ovulatory cycles women who have long periods of anovulatory cycles, women who have early age of menarche and late menopause. That means you are having lots of reproductive years. And third one, nulliparous women. Nulliparous women, you know, they have more increase, I mean, more exposure to estrogen levels. If you are taking extraneous estrogen uh, supplements or hormones or pills, you know, you have this endometrium constantly being exposed to estrogen, right? Another one is, think about any tumors of, you know, ovary which can increase estrogen production, like for example, granulosa cell tumors. So all said and done, un unopposed estrogenic stimulation of endometrium is one of the most, I mean, is the major risk factor for the development of endometrioid type of endometrial carcinoma. The other factors being obesity, hypertension, it is seen that, you know, there is an association between hypertension and diabetes and and endometrioid type of endometrial carcinoma. Now, what is the precursor lesion for endometrioid type of endometrial carcinoma? The precursor lesion is endometrial hyperplasia. Particularly, the atypical type of endometrial hyperplasia is the precursor lesion for endometrioid type of endometrial carcinoma. Now, what is the hallmark of endometrioid type of endometrial carcinoma? I'm talking about pathogenesis now. It is the increased signaling through the PI3K bar AKT pathway. What is this pathway? This pathway is basically a intracellular signal transduction pathway which promotes metabolism, which promotes proliferation, which promotes cell survival, which promotes growth and angiogenesis, you know. So this pathway is increased and the signaling of this pathway is increased and how it is increased? Genomic analysis of these cancers revealed that there are many mutations which causes increased signaling of this pathway. And what happens once this pathway is increased? It basically increases the expression of estrogen receptor dependent target genes in the endometrial cells. Now you have more and more estrogen receptors 
on these endometrial cells and you have the risk factor what is it that is the unoppo unopposed exposure to estrogen so more exposure to estrogen more estrogen receptors are there and then what happens is there is increased proliferation increased cell survival growth and all those things which can result in the formation of malignant tumors now i told that there will be mutations which causes increased signaling of these pathway right now what are the mutations the mutations the most common mutations involved are p10 tumor suppressor gene mutation pik 3ca mutations keras mutations and aridi1a mutations apart from these mutations which increases signaling through the pi3 barricade pathway there are other mutations as well what do these mutations do they disrupt genes that are required for the maintenance of genomic stability and what are the genes involved these are pol gene mutations that means these are disrupt which, which basically disrupt the proofreading of uh, proofreading function of the dna polymerase gene polymerase e gene mutation dna polymerase e gene mutations and the next one is tp53 gene mutations consider this is a proliferative endometrium this is illustration of a proliferative endometrium and this is a stage where there is hyperplasia without atp and the mutation involved at this stage will probably be p10 mutation most common is p10 mutation then you have keras mutation or the other mutations i told you the microsatellite instability which can result in endometrial hyperplasia with atp and this you know can progress to endometrioid carcinoma with additional mutations like you know ari d1a mutation pi3 pik3 ca mutation and fibroblast growth factor 2 receptor mutations so morphologically grossly the endometrial type of endometrial carcinoma can be localized you know you can localize as a small polypoid mass or it can be diffusely involved involving the entire lining of the endometrium you know it can invade into the myometrium it can invade into the cervix it can in invade into the parametrium it can invade into the fallopian tubes and ovary and then metastasize to distant places so basically these are bulky tumors bulky uterus with you know invasive tumor so microscopically as i told you endometrioid means they demonstrate endometrial type pattern so they demonstrate the glandular pattern and based on histological features it is dif you know divided into r you know it is classified as well differentiated moderately differentiated and poorly differentiated it's also referred to as grade 1 grade 2 and grade 3 tumors the well differentiated tumors you know they display well formed glands of course they are atypical glands they form well formed glands whereas moderately differentiated or grade 2 endometrioid cancers they show well formed glands along with solid sheets and these solid sheets account to less than 50% of the tumor the third one is a grade 3 or the poorly differentiated one you find predominantly solid sheets that is more than 50% of the tumor is composed of solid sheets of these malignant cells that is the histology of endometrioid type of endometrial cancer now let's let's see the recent advances in the molecular uh, you know pathogenesis of endometrial cancers so both these type 1 and type 2 you know they are uh, there are four molecular subtypes which has been identified and the first one is ultra mutated type it's also referred to as a pol type pole type where there will be mutations in dna polymerase e gene the second one is hyper mutated type which is basically you have mutations in or epigenetic silencing of re mismatch repair genes and that result in microsatellite instability that's why they are also referred to as microsatellite instable instability instable tumor they are msi tumors the third one is copy number low or mss microsatellite stable tumors these have mutations that upregulate signaling through the pi3 kriket pathway this is what we studied right so the most common mechanism is this copy number low or mss tumors and the last one is copy number high are they are known as serous like tumors which are often associated with tp53 type of mutations so this the serous carcinomas are always copy number high type of tumors so this is what you just have to know that molecularly you there are four uh, subtypes of endometrial cancers now let's move on to understand the serous endometrial carcinoma these are type 2 tumors as i told you they account 
for around 15% of endometrial cancers. Most often, they are 10 years older than those with of endometrioid type. They occur in the setting of endometrial atrophy, unlike endometrioid type where they occur in endometrial hyperplasia, right? And these tumors, they are not associated with estrogen stimulation. The precursor lesion is serous endometrial intraepithelial carcinoma. Precursor lesion in endometrioid type was endometrial hyperplasia, right? Now, these tumors, that is the serous endometrial carcinomas, they have morphologic and biologic overlap with ovarian serous carcinomas. They resemble that of ovarian serous carcinomas. What is the pathogenesis? These, these are highly associated with disruptive mutations in the TP53 tumor suppressor gene. Okay, so I told you TP53 tumor suppressor gene among the molecular subtypes, as I told you, it belongs to the copy number high or serous tumors, right? So this is a pathogenesis. Grossly, these tumors usually occur in the setting of an atrophic uterus. The uterus will be very small and atrophic. But then once the tumor develops, you know, they develop into large bulky tumors. They are very, you know, highly or deeply invasive into the myometrium. Microscopically, you find the serous pattern in the form of, you know, papillary growth factor and pattern composed of cells with marked cytologic ATP. In the endometrioid type, you find glandular pattern, right? Whereas in the serous type, you find the papillary growth pattern. And these are composed of cells with marked cytologic ATP. Now, how do these uh, patients manifest with? Remember, endometrial carcinomas, endometrial cancers are uncommon in women less than 40 years. 40 to 65 years is a peak incidence, you know. Usually, initially, they are asymptomatic and then later they present with bleeding, you know. It can be irregular bleeding or postmenopausal bleeding. Postmenopausal bleeding always have uh, endometrial cancer carcinoma in mind, okay. So, how do you diagnose? How do you evaluate a postmenopausal bleeding? They are subjected to investigative modality called dilatation and curators and take out the endometrial sample and then that is subjected for histopathologic examination to rule out or diagnose endometrial carcinomas. And during diagnosis, you know, DNA analysis is also done. Why? It is to identify if there are any mismatch repair defects because 3 to 5 percent of cases of endometrial carcinomas have Lynch syndrome. Lynch syndrome means, you know, hereditary non-polyposis cancer syndrome where there will be associated, you know, colon carcinomas. These patients have high risk for development of colon carcinoma as well. Now, how do you treat endometrial cancers? Depending upon the type of cancer, whether it is type 1 or type 2, endometrioid type, of course, surgery is done with adjuvant radiation and chemotherapy is considered if the spread is beyond the uterus. Serous carcinomas, chemotherapy is irrespective of the spread of tumors. Even if it is in the early stage, you have to give a chemotherapy. And recently, you know, the trials, clinical trials is happening by using these inhibitors of the PI3K bar AKT pathway. This, you know, this is helpful only in the case of endometrioid type of endometrial carcinomas. Now, what is the prognosis of endometrial cancers? The prognosis, of course, depends upon the stage of endometrial cancer at the time of diagnosis. Now, this is stage 1 tumor. The stage 1 tumor means the tumor is confined to the uterus alone. Now, second one is a stage 2 tumor. The uterus, I mean, the tumor is gone into the cervix, whereas stage 3 tumor, tumor is gone outside the uterus but then it is confined to the pelvis it has not gone beyond the pelvis whereas stage 4 tumors are the tumors which has gone beyond the pelvis into the rectum into the bladder into the liver and spleen okay distant metastasis so these are different stages this is stage 1 stage 2 stage 3 and stage 4 tumors now why do we need to know the stage because that the prognosis depends upon what stage we are looking at. 90% of, nine, there will be 90% 5 year survival in grade 1 or grade 2 tumors. Okay, remember, we have we know that there is a classification of endometrial cancer, cancer as grade 1, grade 2 and grade 3. Well differentiated, moderately and poorly, right? So, 5 year survival is 90% in grade 1 or 2, whereas 75% 5 year survival in grade 2 three lesions. Remember, we are talking about stage 1 disease. If it is a stage 2 disease, around 69% 5 year survival. If it is stage 3 disease, it's around 50% 5 year survival and it drops to 15 to 17% in stage 4 diseases. Now, till now, we talked about 
endometrial carcinoma right now let's move on to understand what is this carcinosarcoma what is carcinosarcoma it's also referred to as malignant mixed mullerian tumors mmmts it's mixture of epithelial and mesenchymal tumor these are the tumors these are the carcinomas which have acquired which have acquired the capacity for mesenchymal differentiation okay they are basically epithelial tumors they have acquired the capacity for mesenchymal differentiation how did we come to know because these tumors have these mutations p10 tb53 and pik3ca mutations which is more commonly found in the endometrial type of endometrial cancer as we saw right okay they do not express the markers of stromal difference i mean the stromal carcinomas which we will be studying a bit later now the epithelial component in carcinosarcoma resembles that of a poorly differentiated type that is grade 3 tumors whereas the mesenchymal component can be of either uterine mesenchymal elements like for example stromal sarcomas or leiomyosarcomas or it can be heterologous elements like for example they can be rhabdomyosarcoma there can be chondrosarcoma other which is other than the the, the native mesenchymal elements okay so carcinosarcoma composed of epithelial component and the mesenchymal component epithelial component is grade 3 tumor mesenchymal component can be either uterine mesenchymal or heterologous elements the morphologically these carcinosarcomas are often bulk bulky and polypoid and they may put protrude through the cervical os and microscopically we know that there can be epithelial as well as mesenchymal component and remember metastases in from these tumors usually contain only the epithelial components now how do these patient manifest they manifest with postmenopausal women with bleeding the prognosis is extremely poor but it depends upon the depth of invasion and stage as i told earlier but with heterologous elements it generally have a poor prognosis Now we finished endometrial carcinoma and carcinosarcoma let's see what is this adenosarcoma adenosarcoma is a malignant appearing stroma with benign do benign they are abnormally shaped glands okay abnormally shaped benign glands with malignant appearing stroma is called adenosarcoma these are generally low grade malignant tumors which occurs in fourth to fifth decades of life and what is important to note that you know in 25% of cases there will be recurrences and moving on to the last part that is the endometrial stromal sarcoma these are associated with chromosomal translocations that create fusion genes okay and they are classified into low grade and high grade sarcomas mm, okay just note that they are classified endometrial stromal sarcomas are pure stromal malignant tumors they are classified as low grade and high grade sarcomas again they occur in fourth to fifth decades of life what is more important here is that 50% of cases there will be recurrences even after removal of the tumor So now we have uh, studied about the types, the etiopathogenesis, the morphology, clinical features, and a bit about prognosis and treatment. Thank you for watching. Do comment if you have any queries to ask, and don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to share if you find this video useful. I'll come out with more interesting videos shortly. Thank you.